Greetings, this is Jazz for Jazz Reviews with, as promised, the top 5 disappointing games of 2013. These choices may not be the worst games by any means, but what they were is disappointing. They failed to deliver upon the hype or expectation of fans. Or perhaps they refused to innovate. Now, Call of Duty is the prime example of this, but Ghosts will not be on my list, because I amongst millions of gamers would never hope for anything more at this stage. And for those reasons, I stand by my decision for number 5. Batman Arkham Origins With development shifted from Rocksteady Studios to Warner Bros games lies a problem. Origins is missing the polish and attention to detail that made previous Bats awesome action games. Superhero games are generally lackluster, so as a standalone game, Arkham Origins is still perhaps one of the best superhero titles ever. Yet based on the foundations built with Asylum and City, expectations were not met. What I was looking forward to was Gotham City itself. This would have been a great opportunity to finally introduce a living, half-civilized Gotham with vehicles and more iconic architecture from the comics. Instead, Origins really provides provides nothing but a bullshit blizzard and curfew excuse to make up for the potential lost. Which meant the city just felt empty. Exploration is devoid of any real charm, it's so dull. Fast travel for this game I expect was only introduced because the commute was so lifeless. The bat grapple didn't help and refused to register with so many environmental objects or surfaces that should definitely have been recognised by the grapple mechanic. And that bridge was so damn annoying. The case file system whereby crime scenes would be reconstructed in a virtual world was, sure, a great concept. And it was entertaining at least to sit there and hear bats play detective, but that was the problem. It wasn't ever really the player making the decisions or thinking for themselves here. And that really is the constant theme throughout any decent review for this game. It didn't aspire to do anything new. It was a copy-paste of the same brilliance that had been established with Rocksteady, yet there were so many opportunities ignored. The new gadgets were simply iterations from past games. The ice grenade now turned to glue grenade, those kind of things. The storyline was respectfully written. New voice actors for Batman and Joker outdid themselves, but ultimately, Batman Arkham Origins was a disappointment for gamers who had played its predecessors. The development shift has set the franchise back a tiny step, yet in itself, Origins was still a decent game in any respect. At number 4. Battlefield 4 Battlefield 4 featured number 6 in my top 10 games of 2013, yet no one can deny how badly Battlefield's launch affected players. It was barely functional for the best part of 2013. N no, screw it, this title was severely broken through and through, whether it was connectivity issues, single player memory wipes, or just the embarrassing amount of game breaking glitches. And we're still having problems today. Electronic Arts now face charges of violating US security laws by allegedly misleading stockholders as to the quality of Battlefield 4. The business model to me comes across as pump and dump. Invest unreal amounts of money into marketing, inflate stock prices to an all-time high, whilst catching release windows for next-gen consoles, and only then attempt to fix a broken product. EA and DICE combined distance themselves from the issues and simply don't take responsibility for the game's problems therein. The so-called Player Appreciation Month of February now awards players with bronze and silver battle packs with shortcut bundles to unlock pistols and grenades. But you know what? Future expansions, what would have come under premium membership, has to be halted now due to DICE's obligation to fix the game's netcode, yet the premium membership still rests at the same price. Ultimately, this is shady business practice. Only in gaming is this possible to such a level. The wording of DICE's responses come across as if the immense problems were just out of their control. As if a couple of rats chewed through their vital server parts during release. And currently you'll find no apology from either company, probably because that would admit liability. So I sincerely do hope EA pay for their mistakes here, so the next Battlefield stands a chance. At number 3, the game famous for natural disasters, a slogan for electronic arts these days. Did you guess it? It's SimCity. It is just mind-blowing how this abomination of a game was released this way. Battlefield's launch was pretty bad, sure, but SimCity totally takes the biscuit here. This is the worst launch I've ever seen. I did consider some next-gen titles for this spot, but I need to address this garbage. The online-only requirement became the main cause of complaints, and the complaints were many. In this release, developers decided to scale down on city sizes, which would require players to rely on other human beings to provide for town-specific functions like education, industrial workplaces, or commercial outlets. So when all of this went down, 
your city was essentially fucked. One had to quickly become self-efficient and build a number of buildings to prevent utter chaos. The problem with this being, the city would never be able to incorporate all these buildings in the tiny maps. You just couldn't fit everything in alongside residential areas. So whilst this core mechanic was an interesting idea, it really was the biggest flaw in gameplay design, as this was the only way the game could be played. Now the game is still buggy as hell, and really completely unplayable depending on your level of patience. Bugs have been fixed here and there, yet new bugs arise and old ones get unfixed. All combining for fun killing limitations that burrowed its way in all through SimCity's development. I'm talking about inherently broken road tools, flow of traffic, public transport issues, or really just the questionable AI of citizens. This title was sold upon intelligent simulation, but citizens of course would pack their briefcases in the morning, leaving their houses to a different place of employment every day of the week. Your nuclear power plant would recklessly hire utter morons with no former qualifications. Here, take a badge. Here's your ID. Now preferably take the most dangerous workstation and we'll take it from there. Pal. Don't get me wrong, plenty of issues such as the flow of traffic have been fixed, but the game is still a mess. And for the state SimCity was released in, I would rather have gotten some Legos out. At least then players would be allowed some level of creativity. At number 2, Rome 2 Total War. Reviewed by myself, played extensively, I am a massive Total War fan. Shogun 2 for me was a masterpiece in realistic strategy, there is no other quite like it. Okay, it took a number of patches before reaching greatness, but the same will never be said for Rome 2. This was the sequel to Rome, critically one of the best games ever made, but with this one. The AI was so abysmal, it was depressing. Movement paths were fatally flawed. Troops would run in other directions, your ships would stop rowing, and this could all be happening at the most critical times in battle. We, we also want to make sure that you know the game is playable on, on, on lower end machines too, so... With a budget that was allegedly 40% bigger than the previous game, Rome could not be run on low end PCs, and it would struggle at times on the best of machines. The introduction of multiple arcade styled capture points were meant to encourage cat and mouse battles, individualizing key points. Yet, in reality, what happens is the enemy AI are too stupid to notice their flags are being taken. And boom, you've beaten these degenerates with almost no effort. In single player campaign, even on legendary difficulty, there was never any real challenge. Enemy factions were so passive and never used any strategy of their own. Not to mention everything was streamlined and co-op campaign did not work. It could not be played without disconnecting. Creative Assembly also neglected to include Shogun 2's Avatar Conquest for multiplayer, so the online was completely bare bones with very little value in the long term. With 9 patches to date. I don't know, I haven't played the game since October, yet what I do know is that problems are still occurring. Big game breaking bugs, especially with the AI itself. For 2013, Rome 2 felt like nothing but a paid for beta test to me. And it will be remembered for an ill-tested, rushed development process, and a game that was falsely advertised. The AI obviously is trying to win the battle, so it will do whatever increases or maximizes its odds of winning. And finally at number one. The mother of all cock-ups. Aliens Colonial Marines. Reviewing this game was perhaps the most fun I've had in this business. It was just so jaw-breakingly laughable in co-op, the campaign was actually bearable. But playing this title as Billy No Mates in single player would just be painful. Firstly, graphical quality, variety and performance was pathetic. Oh, have you ever seen the lens flare? Stay there and look up. Well, that really... Wow. Wow, did you see these shitty smoke effects for you? shitty smoke effects! Right in front. Movement. Weather. Provide a base of fire. The we'll worst made flight. game of all time. It's unclear as to why this title ended up this way. The project was largely outsourced to other studios. Some theories suggest all the money went into Gearbox's Borderlands 2, but fundamentally there is something seriously wrong here. And Gearbox are responsible, just like they were for 2011's Duke Nukem disaster. Gamers need to stop giving these companies free passes. People need to stop accepting poor excuses argued by these kind of frontmen. We're not settling, you know, like a lot of games based on licenses, they become kind of work for hire projects, just milking a franchise. A horror survival we were promised. 
What the? <laughs> <laughs> this game is mind-blowing. The storyline was utter bollocks. The characters were so poorly developed. The most memorable was certainly that mammoth O'Neill. The smart gun toting imbecile who would block players and refuse to inflict any damage on aliens with that weapon of his. And the aliens were completely marginalized due to god-awful AI. The queen alien of all things posed less a threat than the human enemies. The game was four hours long. The multiplayer was okay at best, and I didn't even receive a review copy for this one. Alien fans like me pre-ordered this piece of crap, only to find all the good stuff in E3 wasn't even in the game. So ultimately, Gearbox blatantly lied through their teeth in delivering this garbage at full retail price. This has been Jazz for Jazz Reviews. 2013 possessed some of the greatest titles we've seen in recent gaming. But it also lay candidate to hugely underwhelming sequels and prequels that really disappointed fans. Be sure to check out my top 10 best games of 2013. Otherwise, here's to 2014 and the anticipation of good games for next-gen consoles. Follow me all you want on Twitter, which can be found in the description below. But until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the comments.